The United States is a pretty big and powerful place, so it's easy to assume everyone else has us figured out by now. U.S. cultural influence around the world is undeniable, but it turns out there are still aspects of the USA that confuse the heck out of the rest of the world. On the rocks. Americans love ice. Yep, yep, she likes me. We take our liquor on the rocks, we ice our coffee and our tea, and we fill our fountain drinks to bursting before adding a splash of soda. Could I get more ice, please? But if you've traveled abroad, you probably noticed that getting ice in a drink is the exception, not the rule. According to Smithsonian Magazine, this might be because Europeans see ice as a waste of space. Free refills are rare in Europe, and per the BBC, France has even banned them in the battle against the bulge. But writer and self-professed professional drinker Henry Jeffries suggests a more historical explanation. Before refrigeration, ice was a luxury item in Europe. Since it was so hard to keep ice frozen, only the rich had access to it. But it was much easier to get ice in America, where it was literally harvested from lakes and kept cool in special boxes. We are the magic but even today, Europeans continue to sip their tepid liquids, and Americans have supersized their cups to fit all the ice. How is this a child-sized soda? Well, it's roughly the size of a two-year-old child, if the child were liquefied. Puritanical prudes. America was founded by Puritans, and even today, when it comes to our bikini areas, we could not be bigger prudes. <laughs> This is obvious in pop culture. Getting dirty on film usually gets an R rating. Meanwhile, violence has to be incredibly graphic to get the same. In a 2014 YouGov poll, parents rated graphic violence just as deserving of an R as female exposure, male exposure as slightly worse, and sexually oriented nudity as much less acceptable to anyone under 17. In Europe, the opposite is true. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the erotic lesbian drama Blue is the Warmest Color, which was rated NC-17 in the U.S. for graphic love scenes, was rated suitable for anyone over 12 in France. Rick Steves' travel blog warns Americans that sightseeing in Europe can mean seeing lots of flesh on billboards, in government promos, and on saucy postcards you can send home to your pearl-clutching friends. Do we really need to know everything that's going on with you? Small talk. If you venture outside in America today, chances are you'll have numerous conversations, even if you're just browsing the racks. That's because Americans are the world champions of small talk. So, Ryan, what do you like to do to relax? I like to play basketball. Cool. But according to the Bonjour Effect, the French might shut down a conversation with you if you ask what they do for a living. In The New Yorker, Karan Mahajin, who's originally from India, says it took him over a decade to master the art of American small talk. In his home country, he says interacting with shopkeepers is about your transaction only, not making best friends. At the end of the day, you're you and I'm me. Doggy bag. Not gonna finish that restaurant meal? Just ask the waiter to box it up and take the rest home. But wait, according to the BBC, a survey by the Sustainable Restaurant Association found that 25% of people surveyed in the UK were too embarrassed to ask for a doggy bag, and 24% of people actually thought they weren't allowed to because of health and safety regulations. According to The Local, the same is true in France, with some restaurant owners thinking they could be sued if people ended up getting sick on their food at home. Another difference is that the French are taught to eat everything on their plates to be polite. Unlike in America, where we eat everything, but for other reasons. <laughs> just the tip. Tipping is ingrained in American culture. It's just the SATs all over again! But to foreigners, tipping can be an absolute minefield. BBC America had to tell its readers that tipping wasn't actually legally required, even though it also warned that if you don't tip, you might get chased down by a waiter wanting to know what's up. So until tipping is officially off the menu, keep up on your math. You got it. Say cheese. Americans smile all the time. Unfortunately, this makes us look ridiculous to people from other countries. According to a psychologist at the Polish Academy of Sciences, people from Japan, India, Iran, South Korea, and Russia think those who smile look significantly less intelligent than those who don't. And people in India, Argentina, and the Maldives think smiling makes you look dishonest. Something funny? 
Smiling is so foreign to some countries that American companies actually have to teach their employees to grin at customers, which is what happened when McDonald's opened in Russia in the 90s, according to NPR. Meanwhile, the New York Times reports that Walmarts in Germany had to let their staff stop smiling at customers after some men interpreted this basic kindness as flirting. Blowout elections Did you know that Donald Trump is already campaigning for 2020? The rallies he attends are paid for by his re-election campaign, meaning the race for the White House began a month after he took office. The cost and length of American elections are obscene when you look at other countries. In 2012, the cost of all federal U.S. elections was $5.8 billion. Meanwhile, the 2010 British elections cost a mere $49 million, which according to the BBC means we spent 120 times as much total and 23 times as much per person. In the U.S., candidates campaign for years, while the Washington Diplomat reports that the country with the next longest campaigns is Germany at a measly 114 days. But then again, maybe this is all part of what puts the us in USA. Bankers, women, veterans, Filipino tilt-a-whirl operators are this nation's backbone. Salamat. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.